So this is my new man cave, which uh, I put together in my new house. Um, it's got some 7.1 surround sound audio going on. Um, got a HDMI stereo receiver, um, some game systems, 15 inch plasma. It's all good. My home theater PC is actually in a separate room of the house and what I've got going on is the audio and video running to my stereo receiver here uh, via HDMI and Toslink cables. You can see them right here. They go into the receiver which takes the signal and then outputs it right back into another wall plate over here. And the wall plate is an HDMI one which passes the signal all the way over here and outputs at another HDMI wall plate here for the television. So I've got my wires nice and hidden. I've done the same for my speaker wires. You can see the distribution panel there. And uh, it's working well. Okay, so I'm going to get started and show off how the home theater PC works. Okay, so camera's on the tripod and I'm going to go ahead and launch the front end, which uh, I've actually migrated to Xbox Media Center. I'm going to use a Snapstream Firefly remote to interact with the PC. It's a radio frequency because my PC is in another room of the house. See, there's no IR here, so I have no line of sight. Uh, it works fairly well, and uh, I'll just go ahead and launch Xbox Media Center. Alright, so you may be asking why my PC is in another room to begin with, and there's two reasons for that. First is that... Um, it is my main office and gaming PC as well as my media center and um, it's not always convenient to do that from your living room couch. Okay, so here's the interface for Xbox Media Center. I'm using an Ion skin, works really well. Uh, it's really slick. Uh, another reason that I migrated to Xbox Media Center from Media Portal is that I built a new machine, uh, installed Windows 7 and Media Portal is not officially supported on Windows 7. So I thought I'd give this a shot and it's working out pretty well. So let's get into it. Uh, I'm going to show off first of all the movies. And you can see already that it's looking pretty nice. And the particular skin I have allows me to switch how my movies are presented. So I've got it set to low list, but you can switch it up in different ways. There's a little check mark that you can see on some of these. Um, and that's a watched indicator. After you've seen a particular movie, the application will mark it as watched for you, or you can do it manually. I'm going to switch back to low list. Uh, these are just different ways of actually seeing your media. I enjoy this one because it gives you a nice fan art view. And uh, I'll just jump into a movie. Let's load up Baraka. That's a nice high def one. Okay, so it picks up your movies uh, and it lets you jump into them really easily, so it works great. For navigation, you got your standard controls. Uh, in addition to that, you've got uh, an audio menus that allow you to change the audio streams, the output uh, subtitles if you've got any. And uh, same for your video, actually. It'll allow you to chase how your, change how your interlacing is handled, video scaling, cropping, zooming, uh, calibration, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it works very well. You can uh, bring up an info view, and you can also bring up a context menu, uh, which allows you to customize Xbox Media Center level uh, things. Oh, another thing I forgot is the bookmark feature, which is pretty cool. This allows you to create bookmarks in any particular show or movie that you're watching, um, so that you can come back to it later on. It's pretty handy. You can jump forward and backward in your movies very easily, small jumps, big jumps, chapter navigation, all of that works great. And uh, as with the rest of your media, actually if you pull back into the Xbox Media Center interface, uh, it'll continue playing in the background, which works uh, very well. Okay, so I'm going to stop this movie now, uh, I'm going to jump over to the music section, show you guys how that works. Music. Uh, so, works kind of similar to movies. It'll pick up uh, based on the folders that you've specified. If your stuff is tagged well, it should give you the option of uh, album, title, whatever view. You can see all my music laid out here. You can also change the view, but I prefer the wall since it's pretty easy. 
Picking a song is super easy. It starts right away. You can check out the visualization interface. Um, uses Milk Drop, this particular skin. Uh, works well, I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with that. Again, your media keeps playing in the background as you're browsing around the interface. Jump into the TV shows now. TV shows are, are kind of interesting because you can change the way that it's laid out in so many ways. Um, it's highly skin dependent. Well, let me turn down the volume on that a bit. Just gonna stop the music there so we can take a look at this a little better. Okay, so the episode view uh, is pretty standard. Um, you get some fan art, a description, little thumbnails, watched icons. Uh, you can also switch up how you view your episodes. Again, this is highly skin dependent. Uh, for the one I'm using, I prefer the multiplex view. It's pretty nice. Jump into your show. It's pretty standard. You get the same controls as you do with the movie, uh, including the bookmark feature, which works terrifically. And your media keeps playing in the background. Okay, so I'll stop this. Go back to the interface. And next up is the emulators. Um, I'm really excited about this particular part of the application. Uh, there is this plugin for Xbox Media Center. It's called Launcher. Uh, it lets you run an external application uh, from within the Xbox Media Center interface, and it works particularly well for ROMs. So I've got a couple set up for uh, NES, Genesis, and Super Nintendo. And uh, the skin view gives me a traditional wall view or um, slim list or whatever. I can even showcase them. But the wall is by far the easiest way to navigate, I think. It's the nicest way to do it anyway. And you just pick one and launch it. You're good to go. You configure your emulators for full screen mode. Uh, you shouldn't have a problem. What I use to play these games is this guy here. This is a Logitech Cordless Rumble Pad 2. It's pretty much like a DualShock 2, uh, but for PC. And I'm going to play some Mega Man, because why not? Okay. Got the battery problem resolved there. Now I think my sound is a little off because I'm using Fraps to do some recording in the background here. Okay, you get the point. So I'll just jump into this lava pit and exit the application. And it brings me right back into Xbox Media Center, which is terrific. Whoops. And I'm really excited to get back into playing some of these games. Because who doesn't like old school games? Lots of Genesis games here. Um, one of the things that this particular plugin kind of sucks at is getting your uh, art for the games. It tries to get it off of Yahoo Images or something and that really sucks. So uh, I just downloaded them, downloaded them myself and uh, organized them and uh, the way you can do that is actually edit the XML file. Most of Xbox Media Center configurations happen in XML files which makes it really easy to customize. Which is the next thing I want to talk about. Uh, let's jump into settings. Skins are great in this particular application. Um, one of the things you can do is change your skin on the fly. This is something you can't do in Media Portal, and it works particularly well. So here's a different skin, for example, and uh, you can see it just changed it on the fly. It gives you a different way of just uh, organizing what it looks like, I guess. Uh, I'll show you, actually, this particular skin is good for keeping your content playing in the background, as you can see here, as you navigate around the interface. I think that's a pretty cool feature. 
Um, okay, that's about it for my setup.